Using multi-view blocks is a great way to get a head start on visualizations. As you can see, by simply changing the view direction, multi-view blocks can switch between a 2D and 3D version. Now, Civil 3D comes with a large catalog of multi-view blocks. That being said, sometimes you may need a specific symbol that isn't available in the default collection. You may then wonder if it's possible to create your own multi-view blocks. Well, the answer is yes you can, and it's a lot easier than you may think. Let's take a look. I'm going to use the File tab to flip to a new drawing, and then I'm going to use the Orbit tool here on the Navigation toolbar. Let me tip the drawing up. I'll press Escape to get out of the Orbit tool. In this drawing, I have the components to create a standard double arrow street sign, otherwise known as W1-7. Just for a second, I'm going to open the Visual Style menu, and we'll flip this to Realistic, so you can see that the sign appears shaded in the Realistic mode. Now, when you first saw this drawing, you may have wondered how difficult it was to create this 3D sign. Let me take just a second, and I'll show you how I did it. I'm going to use this File tab on the end to flip to another drawing. To create the sign, I started by going online to find an image of the sign I was interested in. If I bring up Windows Explorer, we can see the file right here. I then inserted this into the drawing. I did that by simply dragging the image into model space. I'll click on screen and we'll drag this out, and I'll press enter for the rotation angle. Next, I scaled the image up to true size. Let's say that this sign needs to be four feet wide. I'm going to use the scale command. I'll select the image and press enter. I'll choose this lower left corner as the base point, and then I'm going to use the reference option. What's my reference length? Well, the distance between the lower left corner and the lower right corner. What should that length be? I'll type 4 and press Enter. Once the sign is true size, I'll select it again, and then in the contextual ribbon, I'm going to drag up this fade value to darken the sign to make it a little easier to trace with line work. Let's pan this over. You can see that's exactly what I did here. I traced over the image and created these polylines. Let's pan this over again. I then detached the image because I didn't need it anymore. I'm going to hold the shift key and the wheel on the mouse will orbit this up. At this point I wanted to turn the geometry into 3D. I did that by using the press pull command. I'm just going to type press and I'll press enter. I will then put my cursor inside a closed shape and click and then I will pull this up and extrude it out to create a solid. All I have to do is enter the height. I'm going to type 0 .025 and I'll press enter. I will then click inside this shape. We'll use the same height. I'll click inside this shape and we'll pull this up. As you can see, using press pull is a lot like using the hatch command, except instead of hatching, we're extruding our geometry and creating solids. When I'm finished, I'll press escape, and then we'll back up and center this geometry on screen. Now that I have solids, I went back to the visual style menu and changed this to realistic. It's a little hard to see the geometry at this point because it's all one color. So what I'm going to do is click in this yellow area. I'll select it, and then I will select this outer edge as well. I will then come over to my Properties palette, which is anchored to the interface. If yours is not, you can press Control one to bring that up on screen. And then in the Color property, I'll select Yellow. I could also put those entities on a different layer, or I could assign a different render material if I wanted. Changing the colors is just one way to do this. Next, I'm going to select the arrow and the stripe. I'll go over to Properties, and we'll choose Select Color this time, and I'll choose a darker color for those entities. I'll press Escape when finished. Next, I'm going to erase the polylines underneath. I don't need those anymore. I'll do that by using the Erase command. I'll select all of this geometry, and then I'll press R for Remove and press Enter. And I'll select the items I'd like to remove from the selection. I'll click the arrow, the major part of the sign, the stripe, and this outer edge. And when I press Enter, all of those polylines are gone. Next, we'll create the pole. I'll do that using the Circle command. I'll start my circle over here and then we'll give it a diameter of maybe 0.2, and I'll press Enter. Let's assume that the bottom of this sign needs to be 5 feet off the ground. I'm going to go back to the Press Pull command. I'll do that by right-clicking, and in the Recent Input menu, I'll choose Press Pull from here. I'll place my cursor inside the circle, and we'll pull this up a distance of 5. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape. Once again, I'll hold my Shift key and the wheel on the mouse. We'll rotate this around. And I'd like to rotate this sign in 3D space to stand it up. Since I'm using a realistic visual style, if I select this geometry, you'll see a gizmo shows up on screen. This happens to be the rotation gizmo. There are three gizmos. If I right-click on this, I could flip to move. We could use this one to move the geometry. Let me press escape. If I right-click on the gizmo and choose scale, this gizmo is used to scale the geometry. Let me press escape. I'll right-click and flip to rotate. I would like to rotate it around the x-axis, so I'll choose the red ribbon and then I'm going to lock my ortho. 
We'll rotate this a perfect 90 degrees. I'll click to accept that, and then I'll press Escape. Let's orbit the drawing around again. I'll zoom out a touch. Then I'm going to use the Move command. I'd like to move this sign, and I'll move it from the Shift right click. I'll use the Object Snap menu. I'll choose the midpoint of this bottom edge, and I'll place that to the quadrant at the front of the pole. Now the sign is five feet off the ground. Finally, let's use the press pull command again. We'll go back to the recent input menu. I'll click inside the circle at the top and we'll pull the pole up another foot and a half. You can use whatever dimensions you like. Now that I'm finished, we'll orbit this around and we'll take a look. Let's go back to the other drawing. So generally speaking, everything we saw in the previous file is what I did to create the sign in this drawing. Now that I have both variations, I'm going to convert each of these variations into a standard block. Let's flip to a top view. I'll use the middle menu to do that. I'll launch the block command, and I'm going to call this block W1-7-P. This will represent the plan view version. I'll choose pick point, and I'll select the center of this circle for my insertion point. I will then select these objects and press enter. These will be converted into a block. We can see the preview right here. I'll click OK, and I have my first block finished. Now, why am I seeing this gizmo? Well, I'm still in the realistic view. Let me flip this back to 2D wireframe. Gizmos do not show up when you're using a 2D wireframe visual style. Let me pan this over, and I'm going to orbit this up a little bit. Let's convert this geometry into a block. I'm going to use the recent input menu again. We'll call this W1-7-M. This will represent the model view of the sign. I'll choose pick point, and then I'm going to pick an insertion point that is common between the two symbols. In this case, I'll choose the center of the bottom of the pole. I will then select these 3D objects, and I'll press Enter. Now that I'm finished, I'll click OK. So I've created a block for each variation. Next, we'll create a multi-view block that holds these two block definitions. I'm going to visit the Insert tab, and to create the multi-view block, I'll expand the block panel, and I'll choose Edit Multi-View Block Definition. I will then give the block a name. I'm going to type MV-W1-7, and I'll click OK. And then in this dialog box, I can give my multi-view block a description. Using these radio buttons, I can define the blocks that I'd like to use for the 2D and 3D representations. Since 2D is already selected, I'll come down and click the Add button. And the block I'd like to use for the 2D representation will be the Plan View block. We can see that show up right here in the preview. I will then click the 3D radio button, and the block I'd like to use for the 3D representation will be the Model View block. If I flip back and forth between the radio buttons, I can see the blocks that I've selected. Using the buttons over here, we can preview the block by looking at it from a 3D or 2D perspective. Now that I'm finished, I'll click OK. I can then delete these symbols, and we can try out the new multi-view block. To insert that block, I'm going to expand the block panel again, and I'll choose Add Multi-View Block. And since this is the only multi-view block in the file, that's the one that I'm holding at my cursor. If I had additional multi-view blocks, I could use the Name feature to select the block I wanted. Let me click to place this in the drawing, and I'll press Escape. Then I'll use the View Cube to change my view to a top view. We'll flip back to a southeast isometric, and we can see this block is working perfectly. Now, what if I wanted to use this block as a point marker? Well, the point marker style requires us to select a standard AutoCAD block. That's all right. All I have to do is create a new standard block that contains this multi-view block. I'm going to go back to Recent Input. We'll launch the block command again, and I'm going to create a new block. I'll call this W1-7. I'll choose Pick Point. The insertion point will be the center of this circle, or the insertion point of the multi-view block. Select Objects. I'll choose the multi-view block and press Enter. I will then click OK when finished. And even though this is now converted into the block, let me select that and I'll press Delete. We'll remove it from the drawing, and let's insert our new symbol. Since it's now a standard block, I can use the Insert command. I'll insert W1-7. We'll click OK. We'll place this in the drawing. We'll change our view. And you can see, even though that multi-view block is encased in another block, it still functions as expected. This means my block can now be used as the basis of a new point style. I could drag it onto a tool palette, or I could easily share it with other drawings using the Design Center. As you can see, it wouldn't take long to start developing your own library of multi-view blocks. By incorporating your own multi-view block symbology into your drawings, you could make quick work of Civil 3D visualizations, no matter how unique your designs may be.